everyone, and welcome to our Dariba webcast of today. My name is Barbara Hansen, and I'm heading the tax department of KPMG in Qatar. So today's presenters uh, will be Imran, Abhishek, and Nurlan. Most of you know them very, very well. Uh, and Uma will at the same time take care of your questions, answer whatever is possible during the session, and the rest we will we have a Q and A session where we will cover cover um, you know the, as much as questions as possible. So before we start with the content of today, I would like to do to clarify some bookkeeping questions with you. Um, so we have already mentioned the questions, so you will be on mute during our session. However, whenever you have questions, be feel free to write them. You will see a, a Q and A section at the right side of the of the of your your screen. Uh, we will also, after the session, ask for your feedback. So please feel free um, to give us your feedback. We actually would would really love to get it. Uh, furthermore, please note that uh, the session is recorded, and we will send you the recording within the next couple of days. So the focus we will cover today, of course, um, you know, in, in it, it, this will be about the RIBA. So we will explain you what is the RIBA exactly. Then we will go to the registration process, explain you the features of the RIBA. But then also we would like to take the, the opportunity and give you a very short update on tax matters here in Qatar. And then, of course, we have uh, built in enough time uh, to answer your questions. So if you would have asked me um, for a picture which would describe the landscape, tax landscape in Qatar best, I would have, uh, the, the last couple of years, I would have probably chosen this one. It's actually a picture of uh, the village where I grew up, just uh, above the village in Switzerland. Very calm, um, not a lot of surprises, maybe from time to time a thunderstorm, but otherwise pretty much foreseeable. This has changed dramatically, and if you would ask me how I would describe the tax landscape in Qatar now, I would rather take a picture of the Shabuya crossing, you can see here, so a lot is happening, a lot of new things, um, and you know, it's, it's quite hard to, to actually keep the, the overview. And here is actually exactly where the RIBA will kick in. So what is the RIBA? The RIBA will be a new tax platform for all the taxes. It's basically your window towards the GTA and your face towards the GTA. So all communication will go via the RIBA. Um, and uh, I think it's a very good thing. Whenever something is happening, you will see it real time. We will go into much more details like later in our session. But I think the most important thing and where I would like to spend a little bit of time, the RIBA will also be used as a control mechanism, as a controlling tool by the GTA. So meaning that it is really, really important that the information you enter into the RIBA already now during registration is correct. The GTA will, for every company, establish a risk profile based on, on the information entered. And, you know, depending whether, if, if there are gaps or if the, the information entered is not very clear, uh, this will substantially increase the risk for you to, to, to have uh, audits or to have more regular audits. So with that, I would like to hand over uh, to Nurlan, who will lead you in more details through the registration process. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, as Barbara mentioned, the new tax system of the GTA will bring uh, its enhanced features and possibilities for the users, taxpayers, tax officers, as well as other government authorities. In order to use these current available and future technical sites of the RIBA, uh, companies, taxpayers need to register till end of September. Uh, we know that certainly you are aware that the GTA has already shared initial details, manuals regarding registration in their new launched website of Dareba, which is dareba.gov.qa, 
And we will also advise, we also advise to complete the registration process as soon as possible in order to mitigate any potential risk and avoid any penalties. It also should be noted that uh, all businesses are required to register in Dariba and get their tax identification numbers as well as tax cards as soon as possible. Companies or authorized signatories can log into the Dariba website and initiate the registration process accordingly. Uh, as shown uh, in our slide as a process, uh, there are certain steps to be completed by companies for the successful use of Dariba profiles. We can distinguish these steps into main two parts. The first one is registration, the left one, which are, we are now in. And the second one is post-registration, the right one, which will be available once companies get their tax identification number, tax card, after the successful registration. Let's also note that as part of the registration, companies will be needed to fulfill certain requirements of each step carefully and accurately in order to avoid any future difficulties or issues with the GTA. As Barbara mentioned, there will be some risk profiling during the uh, registration and after registration process. Therefore, we advise businesses or companies carefully review the provided information and involve KPMG for the support services in both pre-registration and after registration steps, which I mentioned earlier. Let me share some uh, basic details about registration step in the REBA, and we can continue with the NAS account creation. What is NAS? NAS is National Authentication System, which allows users to benefit from ego services in Qatar. Uh, I believe most of you have already registered your Metrash accounts and NAS accounts. So it's a requirement in Qatar from all citizens and Qatari ID owners residents. So as one of those ego services, Dareba also utilizes and gets support of national authentication system in order to grant an access to companies, registered taxpayers, employees, as well as taxpayer representative companies. The crucial moment here is the Qatari ID or passport of the users of NAS account should be linked to mobile numbers in order to have successful registration and access to NAS system. So there are certain uh, steps in NAS account and it also should be taken into consideration. It also should be noted that NAS profile contain personal details of the user, such as name, surname, address, email, etc. So this, we can call this NAS account as a personal account and it belongs to uh, owners of Qatar IDs in the, in the state of Qatar. It also should be noted that the person doing the registration should be an authorized signatory linked to the business registration number. So in order to register your company, the first uh, uh, you need to clarify who is the authorized signatory, as I mentioned, linked to your business registration number. In the next slide, there's an example uh, screen from the welcome or login page of national authentication system. When authorized signature log in the to the repo profile, the system, the website brings a new window from NAS system, as shown right now. Uh, email and cutter ID can be used as a username in order to access to NAS profile as well as the repo profile later on. There's another option, as shown in this picture, uh, which is called login via smart card. And the smart card is different uh, from the username and password option. And this option enables uh, users to log in company profile if the company has an active smart card and also the IT system of that company supports requirements of the smart card technology. So most of the big companies, they do have the smart card technology and uh, which are uh, used for the governmental uh, purposes. If authorized signature is using NAS at the first time, 
and let's say the, the account is going to be created at the first time and no account has never been created under the used Qatar ID, then there will be need of new account creation in NAS system. So as I mentioned in my previous slide, the Qatar ID and the used mobile number should be linked to each other. Otherwise, it will take time to create NAS account and you know, without NAS account, we, uh, we users cannot log in to Dareba profiles. So there are some technical issues and which we have faced and which we received feedback from our clients as well. And if you don't have the linked mobile number to your Qatar ID, and if your sponsor is different other than your employee, so it takes time to solve it. And that's why we are advising our clients to initiate the registration process in NAS account as soon as possible. So users are required to fill personal uh, infor information in that we have the separate slide on these pages. So there are uh, four steps to be completed in NASA account creation. As I mentioned earlier, the system uh, requires the main uh, personal information. Once you have the NASA account created, after successful creation of NASA accounts, users or authorized signatories can use the Arabo profiles, which is shown in our slide now. Once we have authorized signature logs in Dareba profile, the registration page will appear. And sorry, go back, please. And the registration process can be initiated uh, using, using given options in the profile, uh, which will be three options. Uh, one is the self-registration, and one, another one is registration via taxpayer, uh, representative, which is KPMG, and another one is employee of the company. If we look at the, uh, the picture in our next slide, then we can see the same picture, which will be shown to taxpayer uh, authorized signatories in the Reba profile. Regarding the appointment of taxpayer representative, here I want to comment that you can appoint KPMG for the registration as well as post-registration actions on behalf of your company. So once we register your company successfully, then you can appoint KPMG as representative for other tax obligations, such as income tax, withholding tax, excise, and future VAT. Uh, once one of the mentioned options here is selected, the system shows pre-registration notification along with rules and instructions. One of the uh, main and crucial parts here, the given information should be reviewed and should be, should be accurate before submitting it to the GTA. As I mentioned earlier, this given all information will be reviewed by the GTA for the future risk profiling and if needed, they can initiate tax audit as, as Barbara mentioned. Now we can move to the registration process and can cover details of the required information. The first step here we have in the registration process is uh, requested general information about the company. During the registration in the repo profile, the applicants or authorized signatories need to fill the company-related information, such as business activity details, establishment address, owner's information, along with profit share percentage, and so on. Once we have this part is completed, then the system allows us to proceed to the next part, which requires tax-related information of the company. So in this part, you need to provide expected revenue during the next 12 months, number of your employees of your company, as well as Qatar employees, accounting period, and so on. Let's say if your accounting period is different rather than January to December, standard one, then you need to provide a specific explanation and you need to submit backups uh, in the Dareba profile during the registration. Please also keep in mind that there's a restriction of the upload uh, size, so the document size, the attachment size shouldn't be more than five megabytes. After filing these uh, two pages, uh, you will be required to review the summary sheet and once you have reviewed the all given information, which I mentioned earlier, you can move to the declaration of the submitting information. Uh, 
once the registration process is completed, uh, so the contact person of the company will receive acknowledgement email about the completed registration application. If the GTA tax officer does not have any question or uh, they are not going to raise any question, then the registration application will be approved accordingly, I would say, uh, at the same time of your registration application. Again, the contact person will receive email from the GTA about the approved application. <clears throat> then, then, then the registered company can download tax card from the Daribo profile. When the registered uh, taxpayer logins to Daribo profile, there are certain windows where uh, taxpayer representative or taxpayer employee can see tax cards, notifications from the GTA, and the respective tax identification number. <clears throat> As per our discussions with the GTA, currently taxpayers only can register for income tax, and in the future, VAT registration will be activated for taxpayer companies, for businesses in Qatar. So, how can we as KPMG help you in registration as well as post-registration actions? As I presented earlier, these steps are required from companies for the smooth use of the Reba system. Also, I want to highlight that the new system will be one of day-to-day -to -day tools of taxpayer companies and the GTA will be reviewing the provided information during the registration for risk profiling purposes and the given information will also be used for the future tax audits. In our KPMG, our dedicated team members have already completed internal as well as an external awareness session about current and future futures of Dareva. So I also want to inform you that we have already completed many NAS and Dareva account creation support engagements for our clients <coughs> successfully. I uh, also want to inform you that we as KPMG are acting as a bridge role between the GTA and taxpayer companies where we can clarify questions of our uh, clients. So we can communicate with respect to GTA tax officer and Tareba support team in case of any face issues from your side, any <clears throat> raised questions from your side. <clears throat> Sorry. We as KPMG already been registered as taxpayers, so we can uh, receive notifications from your profiles as well. Hereby, I want to transfer the microphone to my colleague in order to present the futures of Tareba, and he will present upcoming uh, opportunities, possibilities of Tareba for you. Thank you, Abhishek. Uh, thank you, Baba and Ullan, uh, for insights on the Dariba registration process. And good morning, everyone, and hope all you are keeping safe. Uh, I'll be talking about the key features of Dariba. Uh, as you all are aware that the GT has announced on 1st July the launch of the first phase of Dariba, which is, we call it, registration phase. And it is with an aim to provide the tax questions, tax services that is safe, easy, and efficient, and will allow the taxpayer to benefit from various type of tax and administrative services once it is fully implemented or fully launched by the GTA. Now let's look at the uh, the, the key features of the RIBA. Uh, to start with, the, the first is the exemption from the penalties. Uh, as per the GTA, the, the taxpayer who registers on the new RIBA tax portal before 30th September 2020, uh, will be exempted from late registration penalties. However, the late filing penalties will remain same. Just to clarify this, that the, the exemption from penalties is for the companies who never registered with the GTA in the past, and they can do so now before 30th September to avoid these penalties. Yeah, but though the companies which are already registered uh, uh, and have the tax card, this exemption is not applicable on them. Uh, also, I would like to mention that the, the tax authority is no longer accepting the applications for the tax card through current system, which we are using uh, for, the uh, for the filing and all, which is TAS. And all the taxpayer, including those currently registered in the TAS, must be registered via the Dariba portal. So it is a mandatory requirement for everyone to register or transfer from TAS to Dariba portals. Uh, the second is the use of technology and the digital platform. 
the Dariba actually, which is a very in, is an integrated digital platform, you know, for the managing the text transaction and also provides the GTA uh, with the digital channels to serve all its partners, whether it is the other government uh, or the ministries and the tax agents or the other taxpayers. And also at the same time, the taxpayer will be able to access Dariba uh, with the use of the new technology and the, 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 the digital platform they're going to use. The, the taxpayer can access to the Dariba from outside Qatar using the multi-factor uh, authentication system, uh, which is unlike the task, which is not accessible from outside Qatar, the system which you're using currently, which is a very good uh, the use of technology and di digital platform and also will uh, uh, useful for taxpayer if, if they're traveling or they're outside the country. Uh, the next is the 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 account management features in the Riba. So what does it mean is that the in account management uh, with these features, the Riba will allow companies uh, to assign tax agents, uh, uh, and accordingly the tax agents can. Uh, the tax agents can manage their uh, the taxpayers' account data, and they can communicate on on their behalf uh, over multiple channels, such as the tax the GTA by using the tax tech messages, emails, dashboards, or uh, the WhatsApp. Uh, and as you know, that these features is currently is not available on TAS. So this is a very useful features where the taxpayer also can assign the tax agents uh, uh, for, to op to act on their behalf. Uh, uh, on, uh, through this portal. Now let's look at the the corporate tax filing and the monthly withholding tax filing uh, uh, for taxpayers. Uh, as you know, that currently uh, the the CIT annual tax filing and monthly withholding tax filing uh, is is done through the task portal. However, once uh, the Dariba is fully implemented, the CIT and uh, the WST filing will be done through Dariba portal. Uh, I would like to mention that the, the GTA will uh, provide further guidance and also advise on the next phase uh, of the RIBA for the submission of withholding tax statements. Because in the current phase, it's only for the registration and uh, apply for the tax card. So we will hear soon from the GTA about the timeline to submit the withholding statements and, uh, and the, the, the CIT filing for the 2020 uh, uh, through the RIBA portal. Also, uh, uh, you know, once you start filing the tax, the, the CID in monthly withholding, it will, it's, a, it's very useful uh, because the system is designed to manage, calculate, and review various type of taxes, which will help the, the taxpayer to receive uh, notification on the progress of their operations in Qatar. So that's more about once we, once they launch the second or the final phase with the corporate tax filing and monthly withholding tax filings through the REMA. The next feature is the uh, about the contract reporting. As you know, that currently uh, we are uh, the 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 contract reporting is uh, is being done manually, as there is no mechanism or there is no uh, online system, the, the no online facilities in the task to do to submit your contract reporting statements. Uh, uh, however, once the the, the Riba is fully implemented, the contract reporting uh, will also be done through the Riba. Uh, uh, for, uh, and this, the tools are basically a sort of statement, and the cover letter will be available uh, for the tax and the, for the tax payers and tax agents. So that's uh, another good features. Uh, the next is the transfer pricing documentations. Uh, as you as you know that the the new executive regulations, uh, which was which was introduced in December last year, uh, contains the specific uh, transfer pricing compliance and documentation requirement for the taxpayer or entities in Qatar. Uh, which is specifically uh, for the Qatar-based entities with uh, the related party transactions exceeding a prescribed revenue or asset threshold, which are yet to be uh, to, to, to provided by the GTA, which we are expecting that they will release soon. Uh, and once the, the GTA provides the guidance and the, 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 the appropriate formats, the, the transfer pricing documentation, which, which includes the, your country-by-country country reporting, the master file, and local files, may also be uploaded and submitted through the Riba system. So, which is another good, uh, uh, the features of the Riba uh, to, to comply with the, your transfer pricing documentation for the companies uh, resident in Qatar. Uh, the next feature, which is, I would say, it's, it's also an very, it's a very important for the taxpayers is the tax audit and the assessments and appeals. As you know, that's very important uh, for, for uh, 
all of us, including taxpayers and tax agents, to have the certainty uh, about the tax status, about the tax status in Qatar. And uh, with this, uh, and uh, the once the uh, the, the Dariba once it is fully implemented, the the GTA will use uh, the uh, this Dariba for to communicate with the tax agents and taxpayer, and uh, and the correspondences and appeal and tax assessments all will be done through the Dariba portal. Uh, it's a good thing, but at the same time, the uh, you know the, you will see more and more tax audits happening and more and more assessments, which we already seeing it that now the department they they are they started clearing the backlogs and we see that uh, they open uh, the open the assessments for last uh, uh, six to ten years together to complete up to 2018 and this will continue and we'll see more and more audit. One side it will give you a certainty and a transparency, but at the same time uh, the the more uh, more and more question and audits because the department will have a lot of information uh, and uh, the data uh, to analyze uh, about the taxpayers and uh, and who to complete the tax assessment and audits uh, and all the going forward. Currently, we have like that we are communicating with the with the GTA either with emails or the manual submission. But once it's very wise fully implemented, all will be. Uh, it will be through the system and uh, there will be no uh, the manual submission or face to face meetings uh, uh, face to face meetings for the taxpayers. Uh, with, and finally, the, the Riba, uh, you know, once it's fully implemented, fully launched with all these phases, the, it will help the, the taxpayer and their tax agents to. So we will have a, a dashboard view of, of the the, the the status tax status of uh, of the taxpayers of all the all kind of taxes which is uh, the, the, the corporate income tax withholding tax excise VAT uh, once implemented or once introduced so uh, basically it's kind of a one uh, uh, it's you will have overall view of the all taxes in Qatar now let's look at the dariba uh, from a the the life cycle of the from perspective of the life life cycle of a taxpayer. The next slide, please. Yeah. So uh, you know, now let's look how the riba will be uh, will play a role and how it is important for a life cycle of a taxpayer. So let's let's understand the what is what is the life cycle of a taxpayer. You know, uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, the, uh, the, the 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 life cycle it starts right at the beginning of the life uh, with the registration of a company. So that's the the first step that for a company or for a taxpayer to register. And it continues all the way to deregistration of the company uh, until you deregister a company, which uh, in, during the life cycle or during the cycle of this, uh, you have the your you, you meet your compliance, you pay your applicable taxes, and then you have your tax audits, uh, uh, the assessments or appeal, and then at the end you do do, do the deregistrations. And uh, the Riba with its interactive features, it's uh, it's gonna it's going to play a vital role. Uh, and it's, it will play a very important role during the, uh, the to complete this cycle because, as I mentioned, that all all the communication going forward through the Riba portal, so it will play a very crucial role, and it it will be very important for a taxpayer in Qatar. And uh, we will know uh, because since they have only launched the phase one now for the registration and the tax card, uh, we will know more and more once the other phases will be rolled out by the GTA. And we will definitely keep you updated with the the, the further uh, uh, further updates from the GTA. And uh, finally, uh, let me conclude by saying that that these new features and uh, I'd say the the updates on the Riva portal should help taxpayer in Qatar with their tax affairs smoothly. However, at the same time, I would like to uh, highlight that. Uh, that we uh, we may ex may expect to more and more uh, the tax audits and interactions and assessments from the GTA. As I mentioned, that uh, because of the the use of technology, the platform they're going to use, and the the e-submission of most of your uh, obligations, the GTA will have more and more information, data to analyze, and uh, uh, and also that Dariba is is very well connected with the other ministries. So if you see that, as Nurlan mentioned. That uh, the Dariba is uh, is connected with the Ministry of Commerce and Industries, and so the some of the information will will retrieve from the Ministry of Economy and Commerce, and they will, will cross verify with the what information you are entering manually in Dariba. So that's another crucial that the even doing the registration, it's very important to uh, 
to enter to make sure that you entered the correct information especially about your related parties your number of employees projected revenue and uh, the in which industry you are operating because in certain industries uh, are, are have a different uh, tax rates so it's uh, it's very important to uh, to fill all those information accurate, accurately because the, the system will define your tax status accordingly based on the information you input uh, with this, uh, and I will be happy to take any questions you may have at the end of the call. And with this, uh, I would uh, now hand over to Michael Ingram, uh, who will take us through the other tax updates. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Abhishek. Thank you, Nurlan, for uh, uh, the useful insight on uh, the RIBA system, uh, the new tax administration system launched by the General Tax Authority. Uh, now we will be discussing about some other uh, current tax updates. Uh, as uh, you know that the General Tax Authority was uh, very active in the last uh, a year, one and a half year or so, and they have uh, been continuously issuing circulars, new instructions. In the last uh, year, December, that the new executive regulations were issued. So a lot has changed in the last uh, few months. And you also aware that the, with the current pandemic situation, the General Tax Authority was uh, took very proactive measures. They extended the deadline for companies uh, to file their return. They understood that the businesses were having issues uh, to meet their tax filing obligation on time because of uh, the presence of employees, etc. So they took the measures. So initially, they extended the deadline to 30th June 2020. Uh, the tax return filing it was further extended to 30th August uh, 2020. Now we would also like to elaborate that this extension initially in the GTS letter, it was referring to only 31st December year end, uh, but we understood from the GTA that this extension is also applicable to companies with uh, a different year end, such as 31st of January, 29th of Feb, or 31st of March. So the tax return filing will also be due by 30th August for companies with uh, such year end. So these are uh, the welcoming steps which are taken by the General Tax Authority with regards to extending the filing of uh, return. Now we will come to another issue, which is about uh, the tax exemption. Uh, as you know, that the new executive regulations have significantly changed uh, the tax exemptions and uh, quite narrow down those exemptions. Uh, one of uh, those was about indirect Qatari shareholding. So the questions were whether the wholly owned Qatari entities, when they are indirectly held by Qatari nationals, whether they are exempted from corporate income tax or uh, these are taxable. So this issue was uh, quite uh, a significant matter for the taxpayers as many companies have a different structures where there are holding companies and uh, there are different ventures being formed uh, under such holding companies for, uh, and sometimes also different cluster of business under the holding companies. So there could be multiple holding companies, so which could create a kind of indirect Qatari shareholding. So whether those entities will be taxable or not. So that issue is, uh, is still debated. Uh, we have a meeting with the General Tax Authority today and hopefully we will be able to give you an update uh, in the next couple of weeks as what the GTA's uh, final viewpoint about those uh, tax exemptions are. The other related matter is about the listed companies. Uh, now you know the listed companies earlier their subsidies are the wholly owned subsidies were exempted from tax, but the new executive regulation stipulated that those companies will no longer be exempt to the extent of non Qatari shareholding. Now, the, another question uh, related to it arises, what about the indirect Qatari shareholding? Whether they need to be a direct Qatari nationals to enjoy the tax exemption, or, uh, or uh, the indirect Qatari nationals can also be exempted under the listed company. So that matter was uh, is still uh, today is uh, also going to be discussed with the General Tax Authority, KPMG, along with other big four firm, and we will keep you posted about any progress in that regard. Uh, another important update or important and significant change which was introduced in the executive regulation was about transfer pricing. As you know that the new executive regulation 
require company to file their TP declaration, master file, and local file. And also the executive regulation stipulate that there will be a limits and conditions set down in the decision issued by the chairman of the general tax authority. Now we understand that the general tax authority is working on uh, drafting those regulations and will soon be issuing uh, uh, details about those limits. And, and so we, we can very much expect that the new transfer pricing rules will be issued in the next couple of months. So we are looking forward to it and uh, we expect that the first TP declaration will be applicable for financial year 2020 and uh, it will be required to be filed along with the 2020 tax return by 30th April 2021. Uh, another update uh, and uh, another significant matter which is uh, in our mind for the last uh, three, four years was about the value added tax. Uh, as you know that the region is uh, has uh, moving ahead with the with the VAT. We have seen recently some countries they have uh, uh, tripled their uh, VAT rate from 5% to 15%. So the, now the questions are coming that when and uh, whether Qatar will be introducing VAT and what will be the uh, the VAT rate. Uh, we already know that the Oman, uh, another GCC country which has introduced or approved the draft VAT law their Shura Council and it will go for further approval. So we can also expect that the Qatar and also another important update which has happened in the last uh, month is about the launching of the RIBA. With the launch of the RIBA which also caters for the requirement of uh, VAT filing, so we can very much uh, expect that uh, VAT could be introduced uh, shortly in Qatar as well. Now the General Tax Authority, they have the tools available to introduce VAT, now only the decisions uh, from the government and uh, from the Amir is, uh, is updated. So we can expect that, that it might be issued uh, quite soon. Yeah. As uh, we were discussing that the current COVID situation, the General Tax Authority has taken quite a number of measures to minimize the physical interaction and uh, and facilitate the taxpayers to continue doing their business uh, smoothly. One of uh, those initiatives was about share transfer procedure. Earlier when a foreign company or another Qatari company was transferring its shares to another shareholder, such uh, a sale purchase agreement needs to be physically attested by the General Tax Authority and stamped by the General Tax Authority. Now that requirement with the current COVID situation, the General Tax Authority has abolished and all the taxpayers, they can apply for the share transfer procedure through the TAS system and will also be able to do it through the new online the REBA system. So now those uh, physical handling of the sale purchase agreement with the General Tax Authority is not required. So it is uh, a very wel welcoming uh, step by the General Tax Authority that the business can smoothly run. Now we will come to another important update. Uh, my colleague Abhishek was uh, talking about uh, the tax, uh, the, the cases, uh, the tax audit which was uh, started uh, by the General Tax Authority and they were going to the, those cases were going to the tax appeal committee and often were going to the court. So there was a flurry of cases uh, before the tax appeal committee as well as before the court, the tax cases. So now the cabinet has passed a resolution on 31st of May 2020 to reform the tax appeal committee. Under the resolution, uh, there will be two tax appeal committees set up. And uh, those tax appeal committee, one will be for the excise tax and other will be for the income tax. We also understand that the, those uh, tax appeal committees, they will be able to appoint uh, an expert and uh, there is also a possibility that a single decision can be issued on a multiple cases. What does that mean? That if there are some similar cases and the General Tax Authority can combine those cases into a one case and can decide on those. And similarly, it can also fast track the appeal committee decisions on a similar future cases which will be going to the tax appeal committee. There is also a possibility of a settlement 
uh, previously the settlement process was not very formalized. What is settlement? Settlement is an agreement when the case is before, for example, tax appeal committee. However, the GTA, the general tax authority and taxpayers, they reach to a kind of a settlement uh, to a lower tax liability or uh, waiving, uh, reducing some penalties, etc. So those uh, procedures now can be formalized before the tax appeal committee and the cases can be withdrawn from the tax appeal committee. Uh, we have seen the, the Qatar, uh, they were using the, the REBA system that we were talking about somewhere in last year about the launch of the REBA and also the other digital uh, uh, platforms uh, which would uh, the, and the use of the technology. However, we have seen that uh, this has been further fast-tracked uh, through the COVID-19 and we have seen uh, a lot more use of technology by the General Tax Authority we also see in the executive regulation uh, stipulating uh, the, uh, about the online platform which will be used for the taxes. So, and now the, uh, the General Tax Authority has fast-tracked also the launch of the REBA. Uh, they have also taken various other measures such as share transfer. So we are seeing an increasing use of technology. And uh, we also expect that in the future, the tax audit, they will be more technology driven and uh, and there will be more smart audit. Uh, your information which is entered with with the general tax authority can possibly be cross match with the with the other information which the government will be having. So a lot is uh, being changing. And uh, and uh, as Barbara initially mentioned that uh, uh, the Riba will be a kind of a bridge. Uh, in, in a kind of a volatile environment, tax environment in which we are going to smoothen the process. So we look forward to the new, the launch of the RIBA and, uh, and its uh, successful implementation. With that, I would like to thank you all. And uh, I would uh, hand over with that uh, to my colleague, Uma, to take your question. Thank you. Thank you, Imran, and thank you, uh, Nurlan Abhishek for taking us uh, through uh, the important aspects of Gariba and uh, the possible implications that it may have, and Imran for the insightful information on the uh, changing landscape uh, in, in Qatar and the changes that GT and the Ministry of Finance has been bringing in. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, we have had quite a number of questions, and I'll uh, while we have been trying to respond to it uh, while the session is on, I'll just take you through some of the um, important questions that have come up for the for the benefit of the rest of the audience. So um, one of the questions that came up was that do Qatari companies and exempt companies, do they need to register on? Uh, um, so the answer to that is yes. So as long as that is carrying on that you are required um, any uh, and it's just uh, it it is important to note that this is going to be your platform for tax cards your platform for filing tax returns so uh, for all your compliance requirements you are anyway going to need uh, to be there on the Riba, to be registered on the Riba. Um, Abhishek, would you like to add anything on this one? Yeah, as you rightly uh, pointed out that all the companies, you know, irrespective of their shareholding, uh, they, know, they need to register uh, on the Riba and which is a mandatory uh, for all the, all the companies uh, uh, in Qatar uh, and to, to register before 30th September uh, to avoid any, any penalties or any you know, adverse implications. Um, yeah, so you will have to register. Uh, the next question that is coming up or uh, observation that uh, one, one of our uh, audiences observed that the tax card does not have an expiry date. And does that mean that you do not need to renew it? Um, our observation as well is, is that, you know, uh, while we see these registrations happening, the good part is that the tax cards, uh, 
they are getting uh, electronically approved once the form is is a good fit uh, you do get a tax card quite immediately and there is no expiry date to the tax card so it is i believe that you will not have to remove it uh, for at least as long as um, you know uh, everything in the company remains status quo so if there are no other issues or no other uh, you know aspects limiting the company to have a tax card uh, it appears that the tax card renewal will not be required and it also appears that this is the intention of the gta because they have seen the struggle and probably even for them it is an additional uh, you know uh, uh, thing to be managed uh, they need separate teams and workforce to just ensure that you know the, the tax card process is done so um i'll i'll ask abhishek if you would want to add more on this abhishek again uh thanks uma yes uh, actually what we know uh, uh, as of now is that the tax uh, the tax card which we are generating or printing after the success after the completion of the registration uh, it doesn't have any any expiry date so we assume that you know it's it's uh, it's going to be a permanent tax card and and the annual registration will not be required uh, unlike what we used to do uh, in the under the old tax where the your tax card validity is it's uh, mostly linked with your the cr but uh, uh, we will not definitely the going forward you know once if any uh, that's the intention of the gta or not and then we'll keep you posted and also i just one more thing on that that now uh, even when we are applying now you know especially after the july so when you are, even for uh, the gta says that they will only uh, the only the, the revise they will accept only for the new registration but we have now seen in last week that where we are where we applied for the tax card renewal uh, even prior to july and now and we were following up with them so now they have said that please register on the reba so it seems that you know even for the renewal you know they, they want people to register and then they will get the tax card so uh, so that's uh, another point to, to you know to, to note yeah that was going to be the next question because uh, the there are uh, there, there was a question on whether i should still renew on go for my annual renewal of the tax card and that the answer to that is no you would yes uh, i think the riba uh, yeah sorry yeah i think uh, the, the, if you have the tax card which is going to expire soon say you know in the in this month or next month i think most probably you will you will register on the, on the riba and you will get your uh, new tax card uh, and the uh, if Uh, as per our understanding that the tin number uh, you will have a different tin number which will replace your old old tin number which you had on on the on the, the yellow color tax card uh we received also one question about like how the gta will be doing the risk profiling of the company and uh, like uh, whether those calculation or uh, those uh, mechanism are visible to the taxpayer uh, right now we understand that those uh, some of the factors which will be which could possibly be used by the general tax authority for the risk profiling these includes usually the history of uh, the taxpayer whether they were compliant in their tax filing obligations in the past paid their taxes on time it will also include uh, factors such as uh, uh, whether the owners are uh, registered in a cooperative jurisdiction it will also include factors such as uh, whether there are systems in place uh, to manage their uh, tax affair there are tax policies and procedures so there will be various factors which will uh, take will be taken into account while determining uh, the risk profile of a company for uh, the purpose of the riba and also there could be other factors uh, such as whether the company is uh, is a large tax payer or small or a medium tax payer so then depending on those requirements uh, the extent of the tax audit uh, can be determined by the general tax authority okay thank you for that uh, abhishek there's also uh, imran there's one more question actually uh, they say that do private company for public benefit entities uh, who do not have a cr do they have to register for the riba uh, if uh... Uh, yes so uh, the answer to that question is uh, yes uh, the the private companies even they are for public benefit although there may not necessarily be a kind of a corporate tax filing 
but they are required to register for the tax card under the new executive regulations and the tax law. And similarly, they will also be required to register for the RIBA because they are still required to deduct withholding tax uh, on behalf of the non residents obligation. So yes, uh, those private uh, uh, entities which are for public benefit, they also need to register for the RIBA. Okay, the, uh, then there was one common question. Uh, I think uh, it is, this is for Nurla. Uh, is how do they proceed on registration of uh, of the tax agent? Uh, yeah, thank you, Uma. The actual there are two uh, ways. The first uh, the first one is pre-registration, and the second one is after registration. So uh, the, you can assign KPMG for the registration purposes, and once KPMG receives notification, the KPMG a uh, representative can uh, register your company. Once uh, we register your company, there will be the second way. In the second way, you will be acting as a taxpayer. And as a taxpayer, you can register KPMG for your uh, future tax, uh, acting, of, acting on behalf of you to, for the future tax obligations. So as of now, uh, the GTA uh, enabled only income tax in the driver profile. And as for the given information, there are certain phases in the Dariba. So next phase is withholding tax. And once it's announced, the taxpayers uh, who is registered already uh, can register for withholding tax purposes. So it will be a separate phase. And I believe there will be different type of questions which should be completed and which should be filled by the taxpayer companies. Thank yeah, thank you. Um, then there is uh, there is another question uh, related to activities. So if an entity has multiple activities and the tax card that is being registered, it picks only one activity. Is there any concern around that? Uh, and uh, should the company be concerned? Actually, as of now, uh, I believe that Dariba collects the all information from MOCI and the uh, business activity codes should be same as the CR. If they are different and if there is any mistake or uh, uh, incorrectness, so it's advised to communicate with the GTA and the MOCI. So I believe GTA comments will be the collected information from the MOCI. It should be clarified with the MOCI. Uh, okay, and uh, related to CR and uh, uh, activities, there is one more uh, scenario where an entity will may not have a CR, um, and they would have a, a tax uh, uh, only a commercial license, so a consulting company. Uh, how do can they register on the RIBA when they do not have a CR and just have a, a commercial license? If uh, either Nurar or Apishik, if you could, um, maybe yeah. Apishik, if you could respond to this question. Yeah, sure. Uh, I think uh, I think you're uh, you're referring to the some of the uh, engineering companies and consulting firms. You know, they are they are permanently registered here and they don't have a CR. They, they what they have is the commercial license, which is as good as, as, good as CR. So I I don't see any problem. You know, any issue to, for them to. Uh, to, to register by using the commercial license and the, the, the number uh, mentioned on their license. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that uh, clarification. Um, the other question that has come up is that once the RIBA is, once you have registered on the RIBA, say now in July, so uh, when you are going to do your withholding tax filing, for the next month or the month later, um, when would when would that happen? So, when would you start doing your withholding tax registration, for example, on the RIBA? Are you immediately required to do that? Uh, in Abhishek, if you could respond to that question. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, that this uh, the the current phase is uh, the registration phase. You know where the they have deadline until 30th September for all the companies to register uh, on the RIBA. 
So once the registration is done and uh, you know the, the companies will uh, once we provide all the data. So most probably, I think after September only they will start. Uh, you know they will allow the taxpayers, which is this is what our understanding as of now is that after September only they will be uh, they will allow taxpayers to submit the withholding monthly withholding tax online. But uh, we will we will definitely update on that once we have the clear date or a clear timeline regarding the withholding tax. Okay, there is a follow on question to our earlier discussion around uh, uh, not picking the right activity. So the the one of the audience, the members has uh, corrected us, saying, uh, corrected me saying that it's not about wrong activity. But if there are multiple activities and they pick only one in ascending or descending order, uh, would uh, that have any impact? Yeah, it's better to take this question offline and we advise contact with some of uh, your KPMG contacts and then we can discuss it later. And we can uh, the, the actual uh, view on your in your driver, pro driver profile. Sure. Um, and uh, uh, there is one question that we have uh, for Imran actually um, is regarding this impact of GCC nationals. Uh, you know, is it now certain that GCC nationals are exempted, uh, whether they are exempted or uh, are now taxable under the new executive regulation? And is there any circumstances where you could still claim exemption for them? Yeah, uh, it's, it's a good question. Uh, that's uh, the GCC national, the new executive regulations were uh, very clear about it, uh, stipulating the conditions under which the GCC national will be exempted. Uh, one of uh, those that they, they need to be resident in Qatar in order to be entitled for an exemption. So if a company which is owned, for example, 50% by Qatari national and 50% by, by Umani national, uh, the Umani national need to be resident in Qatar in order to claim an uh, exemption from corporate income tax for the, the, the subsidiary or uh, the company it is holding the shares in it. So they can only be exempted if uh, they are resident in Qatar. If the GCC national are not resident in Qatar, they will no longer be exempted from corporate income tax. And they, they, it, so it is, this matter is quite clear in the executive regulation as well as uh, from our uh, discussion with the general tax authority so there is uh, no confusion about it now another question uh, which arises related to it how we determine the residency of uh, a gcc national whether it could be solely based on a qatari id card uh, our understanding is no it should be based on the conditions which are laid down in the law and uh, those are one of them is that if his or uh, her stay should be more than 183 days in a year in Qatar and are a permanent home in Qatar or his center of vital interest, families, relatives, etc., are based in Qatar. So though if uh, the GCC national doesn't meet those conditions, any of those conditions, uh, he'll, his share of profit will be taxable. Thank you, Imran. Um, then there's one more question uh, for Nurlan, uh, which is uh, regarding the registration uh, for the RIBA. The question is that does the registration, is it required that the authorized representative has to do it, the person who's there on the computer card, or can it be done uh, by any other uh, senior member or any other employee uh, of the company that the company appoints? Um, and uh, secondly, uh, there is a related question is that uh, do they need to register their personal details before they do the RIPA registration? Okay, uh, in order to register the company or appoint tax representative for the registration purposes, the first uh, action is the authorized signature is access. So the, the, the system works uh, in that way. So the first authorized signature needs to create a NAS account and the RIBA account. And later on, uh, the authorized signature can uh, assign the processes to employees or taxpayer representative. And regarding personal information, 
that, that can you register your employer or can you register yourself and include your cutter ID number. All the information is coming there. So it's linked to your cutter ID. Okay, uh, thank you, Nurlan. Um, I think uh, we probably now are uh, running a little uh, out of time to have more questions. Uh, we will try to respond to your questions. We will try to get in touch with you and, um, and respond to your questions, or you may uh, want to get in touch with one of our panelists. But I'll, I'll request Barbara if she could, um, you know, uh, yes. give us the way forward and. Uh, and yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Uma. And uh, I think, you know, thanks to all for your active participation. I think all of us see that this Tariba will really change the tax uh, landscape in Qatar. Uh, it will it will be a good thing. I'm, I'm, I'm convinced, but it is very, very important that the registration is done very, very carefully. And the registration itself will probably be a hassle for, for all of us. But once this is done, it will change the future. So with that, I would like to thank you. And please don't forget to give us your feedback and have a, an excellent afternoon and a great weekend ahead. Thank you.